Okay, so there's a couple of attendees more. So I think I think this might be um, I think this might be a good time to start. So we'll let the um, we'll let other people join as they as they come online. So um, welcome uh, to this uh, webinar today, everyone. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us and um, look at this great product that we're about to show you today which is the B1 usability package and CRM for Outlook. Um, that's going to be demonstrated by Boyum IT. So um, just a couple of, um, just an introduction by myself quickly. Um, so my name is Matt Grief. I'm the account manager with Milner Brown. I've worked with Sub Business One for 10 years now. I used to work on a um, support desk and as a consultant. And I remember when the B1 usability package came out a few years ago, um, it, it revolutionized the way that um, Business One was used. Um, I, I used to get many uh, comments from everyone saying that um, you know, it's completely changed the way they, they see Business One and it's, it's completely changed their productivity um, you know, and, and helped them greatly with, with their day-to-day -day tasks. So I'm hoping that um, you will see the value of, of this today in the same way that I personally did a couple of years ago and that many other people have done so um, as well. So, um, Norma Aroni is the um, Channel Enablement Manager from Boyum IT. Um, she is the um, Boyum expert um, in, in, this, in, in this field. So, she has been working with Subbusiness One in the industry since 2003, and she worked um, for seven years with SAP Business One. And as you can see, for the past three and a half years, she's been with Boyum IT. Um, just a couple of things before we um, hand over to Norma. Um, just some housekeeping. Um, so if you have any questions um, after the session, we'll, the session will be about 50 minutes long. Um, then we'll give some time for Q&A um, afterwards for about 10 minutes. Um, on the control panel, on the GoToWebinar, you will um, there will be an option um, in, in a panel there um, that says questions. So if you, um, if, you, if you would like, you can type the questions into us in the questions or chat message, and we will then relay the answers back to you. Myself or Norma will either um, get back to you on, on your questions around that. Um, through the session, should you experience any technical difficulties, um, you can contact us via the chat and we'll do our best to help you with any problems you might have. Um, I know there are sometimes uh, connection problems, however, we are recording this webinar um, as well today, so if you do miss out on anything and you would like to see the full session, um, please get in touch with us and we will email that to you or send that to you um, via some other means, um, send the full recording to you. Okay, so um, uh, the last point before I hand over is, is, is on the pricing. Now, um, we, we're not going to um, obviously talk about pricing today, but just to mention there is a 10% discount, a, a one-time discount on any orders placed before the end of March. So if you would like to ask us about the various pricing of get in touch with your relevant account managers um, after the session, and we'll be happy to help with any queries you might have. So that's it from me. Um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to um, Norma from Boyum IT, and um, she will um, carry the session on. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to Norma now, and we will um, start the session. Thank you very much, Matt. So I hope you can all see my screen and hear me. If you can, uh, just uh, raise it in the chat. And again, thanks for the opportunity to um, talk to you today and explain to you about what is it that we do and, and why really Boyum IT is such a known, a, a known a name in the SAP Business One industry. So before uh, we get started, the, the idea of this presentation is really how to become more productive at what you do every day. Productivity is a big thing. It translates into revenue growth in the long term. And when you can take processes uh, that you're running in your own businesses and make them simpler, 
and make them just work without the, the further um, time that it takes you to process things without an aligned process, then what, when you, what, what actually is going to happen out of that is that users are becoming more productive and of course customers becoming more satisfied. But I'm going to talk more about it as, we, as uh, I'm going to go through the presentation. Before I get started, I just want to say to um, all of you that might not, haven't heard about Boyum. So Boyum IT is a company based in uh, Denmark. We are an international company, so we have offices in Mexico and the UK and uh, Germany and of course Denmark and Brazil and so and Australia, India. So we are pretty much uh, spread around the globe in order to give you the better support that, uh, that we can in your time zone. And uh, just a few words about our customers and our products. So we have more than 29 well, it's actually more than 3,000 right now. I actually, I actually checked it yesterday. More than 3,000 customers worldwide installed in 70 plus countries, and we have more than 52,000 users as of today. So that's a pretty big numbers, and it's just here to show you that we've been around for a very long time. We know what we're doing, and our products are heavily used in SAP Business One by by the community of SAP Business One users. So I want to start with uh, what we call the usability package, or in short, the B1 app. This is the core product, and this product was made for customization. That's what it does. It takes your business, SAP Business One, make it your own. And that is the idea of SAP Business One. Otherwise, if you think like an iPhone, then if Apple provides an iPhone, I'm sorry for the commercial, but let's say Apple provides an iPhone, without the add-ons, the iPhone would be I mean, almost useless. And this is what we provide in, in general add-ons. And of course, when we're talking about the customization add-on, that can take that Apple or that iPhone and make it something that matching only your business. Okay, so that is the idea. I'm going to start with the B1 app, and then later I'm going to talk about the CRM for Outlook, which is the second product that we're going to introduce to you today. If you have questions about any of the yellow circles about those products, those are productivity package. Uh, the print and delivery allows you to email or do automatic customization around your communication with customers and suppliers. B1 Document Manager allows you to manage your documentation more easily in a more folder structure. The B1 MailChimp, for those of you that are using the, the MailChimp system, an internet system uh, for sending uh, campaigns, then we provide a synchronization from SAP Business One to MailChimp and back. The B1 Time Task is a time tracking tool that allows you to track your time and expenses and then later to invoice uh, your customers. And the B1 Budget is a sales budget display tool. Okay, so any questions if you have around those, uh, we can always answer that. But again, just um, refer to Milna Brown with any, any questions. So I want to start with uh, the SAP Business One that you know, and some of you have been here long enough and you know uh, um, SAP Business One, some of you might be new, but in general, all windows look the same. That's the business partner master data, that's the way it was developed, and uh, if we the B1 usability package on top of it, then this window is going to look slightly different. So first of all, I see a flag where this customer is coming from. I can add checkboxes if I need. I can uh, display a, any a alerts, visual color alerts on the account balance to make sure that the status is okay or maybe it's bad and then it turns red. I can make fields mandatory. I can add buttons that can go and do different things inside SAP or outside SAP. I can put user-defined fields on the main screen and I can even add a golden arrow for them. So they are going to open the relevant form or whatever it is that you would like this link to open. I can add an additional tab, I can hide tabs, and I can make everything, all of those customization, and this is just a, sli a part of what we can do. Obviously there are things like business processes that I cannot show in one slide, but I can do all of that based on specific users or user groups, so it doesn't have to fit all. It can be customized to that user who needs that customization. Okay, so we're all about customizing and really adding business logic, and when we say business logic, that's where we add alert system. We add 
all the, the pop-ups and alerts and procedures that you would like to see happening in your business, but sometimes the capabilities of SAP Business One are limited, and, uh, and that's okay. That's part of the idea of the add-ons. But what I would like you to take out of this session is that in order for you to grow your business, you have to make sure that your ERP system, in, a, in this case SAP Business One, works in harmony with all the other moving parts that it has around it, meaning with all the other add-on or maybe custom codes. And to achieve that, to achieve that perfect harmony, you need to work, you need to work smart. What it means is that you want to involve as uh, uh, little as possible in terms of add-ons, you don't want to have too many custom codes running in the background because all of, the, all of those custom codes mean maintenance and if there is a bug in one version from SAP, then maybe there is a problem in, in the custom code. I hope you all understand when I mean custom code. It's when somebody writes a specific code for your business. It's not a generalized add-on. Okay, so we really want to make sure everything works okay and everything interacts in harmony. Now, the B1 usability package as part of being a customization add-on can do a lot of things. I cannot even say it does one, two, three, four things. It does a, a, a huge amount of things and we call it the toolbox because really we can take uh, a few of those items and make them work together or we can use, for example, a data quality as a separate section or we can create a new navigation or automating task or searching or make advanced validation. I'm going to show all of that to you, of course, what the time will allow us. I'm going to do live examples with you, so not just predefined uh, uh, scenarios because I really want you to see how easy it is to do things and, and that is, again, when it's easy to do it, you just want to add more customization and to really make SAP Business One your own. So what happens when you need a new customization in SAP Business One? Some of, the, some of you went through this process. You know that, first of all, there needs to be a developer someplace in Milner Brown. You need to do a scoping, a coding, testing, and training, and all that has a cost. And the cost is not just to you as the customer, but also to Milder Brown in terms of resources and what it means to have a developer assigned to one single customization from, for one of you. It means that he doesn't have time to do anything else. So the, the, what we're trying to save here is, of course, the cost of all those small procedures that uh, or small codes, pieces of code, and to put it all in one package that can, will do 90%, I will never spread, but 90% of all of, all of, of all your configuration and customization needs. Okay, so I want to start uh, with that. My slides are going to be more minimal, but I want to start with um, what can be done with B1Up in five minutes. And when I said can be done, meaning to be configured. I'm not going to configure it with you, but um, this is something that when I've added it into the system, it took me about five minutes and it was just when I started. So let's go into the system and let's start play with it. I'm going to go into a sales order. The example that you saw on the slide was from a customer that wanted to make sure that whenever his users are adding a sales order, that there are not going to be any lines that have or missing a price. Okay, it can be any type of uh, rule. In this case, if they're not missing a price, in another case, it could be in a, above gro gross profit, X amount of gross, X yeah, amount of gross profit, or below a certain amount of gross profit, and so on. So in this scenario, I'm just gonna clear uh, some of the values here from the unit price, and I'm going to click on zero price lines. The zero price lines, obviously, it's a button that I've added, which when I click on it, it tells me that the following lines have a zero price which is not allowed, line two, line four, and line six. So it captures the number. How does it do it? It just goes line by line and checks for whatever you want to check. It's just a SQL query running in the background. Okay, but the idea is to do a line by line check and that usually requires, without the B1UP, it would require code, which means, again, the custom code problem. Now, you might say, you know, my users are not going to remember clicking on that button. I just want to have them uh, click on the ad and whatever error that they may have in the form, I want it to pop up for them. So I can click on the ad so I can change the behavior and say, 
Before this document is added, make sure that if I have any zero price lines, I will get this alert. And I cannot continue until I will resolve it. Of course, you can do a warning. In this case, I'm doing a hard block and I'm not letting the user adding it. So you can decide where your business process is going to be triggered out of, out of this button or out of this button, and of course, it, whatever makes sense to you. So again, that's just one example. And now I would like to move to something called screen design. Okay, so around screen designs, we have many things. I will show you the highlight of them. Of course, I cannot show you every uh, small feature of the product, but of course, I will show you the main ones. So I want to start with screen design on the business partner. And like um, um, generally in a screen design, what I would like to do is sometimes to hide fields that are not relevant, to move fields into different areas in the application, and to move the user-defined fields that we mostly all have. So I would start with hiding. I'm going to right-click, hide this item, and this window is going to be opened up. I don't really care about it. I'm just going to click on update and move on, and the field has been just as simple as that. Now, I also want to enable here my user-defined fields, and I want to move the hide from list. Okay, so that's a yes and a no field. Why am I showing you that? It's because this field can become a checkbox. I don't need to use a drop-down. I just want to move it first into the main screen, and I want to place it below the name. So I'm just going to click on below. It tells me to click on the label, so I'm just click on OK, and the label name, and now I have this window again, but this time the only thing I will change, this is the row, the only thing I will change, I will change the type from a combo box into a checkbox. So now when I click the update, the field has changed its appearance and now it's a checkbox. Okay, so once you move all those fields to the relevant tabs where they need to be, you can just close them because anyway that screen is hard to manage. Now, let's say that I want to add a tab. Let's say that uh, we have a special business and we need some more information here and we want to create a new tab for it. So, again, right-click. You will see that the menu is very intuitive. I'm going to click on Create a New Tab and let's call that Milner. Okay, just in short for Milner Brown. And I'm going to add some fields over. Those are user-defined fields by definition. Of course, I can also move system fields, so now it tells me that it was created successfully and I can reopen that and I will see that new tab. And if I want to move, for example, that um, um, business partner type field, okay, so I'm moving it from one tab to the other. For those of you that have 9.1 available and you upgrade to 9.1, you know you can hide move fields in 9.1, but you cannot move them between different tabs, unfortunately. So now I want to move this item, and I want to place it below the last field on the Milner New tab. So I'm just going to click on the item, and the field has been hidden. But again, this time before I'm going to move on, I just want to make sure that people see the label uh, in a different color. So I can come here and decide that this will be my text. And this will be my background. I'm sorry for the choice of colors. I know it's going to look disgusting, but uh, it's just to show you how easy it is. You don't see um, the blue very good. But in general, you can change the colors of any field that you would like in the system. And usually to change a color is something that requires code. Okay, it's only by code. There is no tool of SAP that can allow you to color any field that you want, to add labels, to add rectangles, whatever it is that you need on the screen, uh, you can do that with the B1Up pretty easily, as you can see. Okay, now, uh, another thing that I would like to show you is that we have here two user-defined fields, or the user-defined fields that I've added into the system. I've added this one with three values. For those of you that know how to add user-defined fields, you know that I can add a field with values, and I added another field user with a blank alphanumeric text, just like this field, okay? Has no list or nothing. With that designing tool, I was able to say that whenever I choose something from that list, it will go to item as to data. 
And whenever I have what was a blank field, now I have a list. It's built based on a, a SQL query. Whenever I choose someone from here, it's going to open my OUSR or the user setup. Okay, and you can decide, for example, if you're using add-ons, other add-ons, or you're using something else, or you want that link to do something else, or open an add-on screen, open a report, or open whatever it is that makes sense to you, you can customize that as well. I'm just showing you the easy examples. Okay, so those are uh, just a few things that we can do that are very easy. Uh, also around screen design, we can add additional menus. For example, we've added the Boyom IT support. One of them opens the manual. One of them will do an email to support. So you can see that it's made for support with a request for support. And I can even add a body to the email. And the last part was the Boyom IT support website. So I can make sure that the users have very quick access to whatever it is that they need and use all the time, use frequently just to save that time. It may seem like a small saving, but when you count it to a, a compared to um, you know the number of user, users doing it and the, the, the time saving that they get just on quick, uh, easy shortcuts, then uh, it actually be, translates to a big saving. Okay, so now I want to move on to something called easy access. So we've seen that with uh, menus, but now I want to create some buttons with you. Okay, so let's go into the application again, and let's decide to add a button. So like anything else, I right-click, add a button. Okay, so now I can click on the add. Everything else is pre-filled. I don't really need to do anything in here. I'm just going to click, for example, decide to add an order screen, an order button, sorry. So now out of the function, the function list, I can choose what this button is going to do. Is it going to be a, an aging? Is it going to be a multi-button? Is it going to be a formatted search or something else? Or I can choose one of the predefined business one options. So I can choose an order will open an order screen. And I can even say that I don't want it to be available in find and add. I can, of course, specify it by user like any, any other configuration screen. And it will work only on OK. So now we'll reopen the window again. And I will see the order, but grayed out because I'm on find mode. Once I'm going to move to an OK mode, it's available. I'm going to click on the order. And it's going to open an order to Norm Thompson. Another nice option that uh, many customers like, because then it, it can really expand uh, what um, you know, they can imagine doing with this product, I'm going to add a button that's going to search customer in Google. OK, so I'm going to leave this open. I'm just going to say that this is a button type external launcher. What it means is that it, it's launching something externally outside of the system. So I'm just going to go here to Google. And I'm going to type SAP, and now it's going to search for SAP. If I'm going to change that into HP, obviously, I get HP. Why am I showing you that? Because now it says here, let's do HP. It will search for HP. And like that, if I'm going to change for anything in here, it's going to change the search. Once I understand that logic, I'm just going to copy that URL. And I'm going to paste it into the button. And at the end of that URL, I'm going to enable, if you don't know what system information is, then I would advise you to learn, uh, to learn what it is. But in general, every item have a, has a representation in, in the system. And you can see that I highlight Norm Thompson. Down below on the, on the bottom left corner of the screen, it says item equals 7. So I'm saying search for the name for 7 in Google. OK, that's what I did. Let's reopen and choose Norm and click on Search Google. And now it's going to open Norm Thompson in Google. At the same way, if I'm going to move to someone else, Search Google is going to open Parameter Technology. OK, I can utilize like that Skype, and I can do search Amazon, a search item in Amazon, or I can search tracking number in DHL or UPS or whatever uh, your, um, um, the system that you're using for um, shipment. 
Okay, so that is very easy and that's the reason I'm doing it with you so you can see what an easy interface it has. Around automation, we can create many things like, uh, for example, uh, macros and default data entry and get uh, groups of data entry. Uh, I, I want to show you the macros that we have in our system because macros, many people of you right now think of Excel, is slightly different than Excel, but it will automate your procedures for you. And what do I mean by that? Let's say I'm adding an AP invoice. I'm not sure how many of you are um, adding and paying AP invoices. So I'm going to show you what happens in Business One regularly and then I'm going to show you what can happen with an automation. So let's say I'm adding an AP invoice, number 252. I'm going to click on the Add. Okay, and I now want to pay it. So I'm going to go into Banking, Outgoing Payment, Outgoing Payment. So notice the clicks that I do. The, the amount of time that it takes me to do it. Now I want to pay a AP invoice 252. It's going to be right here. I want to go into the payment means and pay it by a check. So I'm going to do control B here. Click on OK. Click on add. Click on add. And now I want to display the checks for payment because I want to print it on a check slip. Let's say that's the process that I do 50% of my time because I work in accounting. Okay, so now we're going to see how we can automate it. I want you to watch the screen. I'm just going to duplicate this AP invoice. And I want you to watch the screen because it's going to happen quite fast, okay? So I'm going to go back into this AP invoice 253. I want to pay it. I'm going to click on the payment. And this is the point where you need to look into the screen. And it's done. Here is checks for payment for that AP invoice. Done automatically. It took about a second or maybe two seconds. And again, the check slip is ready and I can just print it. I can even automate the print, but obviously showing you or dem demoing it to you, not in front of your eyes, uh, then uh, there is no point for me in printing that. Okay? So if you do have questions, just write them down in the chat and I'm going to refer to them uh, towards the end of this presentation. So that's automation and like that you can automate any repetitive task that you have, we can automate. I've done uh, different uh, examples for other demos that, for example, automatic batch processing uh, from a sales order or really doing crazy stuff that uh, people don't think about it, but now when they see an example, they, uh, it makes them think about what they can automate in their business. EDI solution is something recent that we've added in uh, the recent, well, I think, year and a half. Um, it allows you to import and export any data inside into Business One and outside to another program. It can do XML or any other format. For the import, just for the import, there needs to be a coding done. Okay, That's the only place in the B1UP that you need to do coding for because you have to map the fields that from the file you're getting into the fields in SAP Business One. So that's the uh, only note that I have in here. As for alerts and validation, I haven't met one customer that doesn't want an alert. Most customers I speak, you, I, I speak to, and I've been to this business quite, for quite some time, I met uh, customers from different countries, and they're all saying, I wish we could have that alert, and I wish it was easy to make, and I didn't have to pay for it such a huge amount of money. So let's see what we can do. And again, what I'm showing you are just examples. Think, we, think uh, imagine what kind of alerts you would need in your business. So we have different type of alerts. Let's start with what I showed you at the beginning with the business partner. So with the business partner, I said that on the account, on the account uh, balance, I have a, a coloring system. So that's a validation. And it's basically saying, how is this customer performing against his credit limit? As long as he's below his credit limit, I'm good. Once he's above that, then it's turning red. Okay, I'm going to continue to scroll and you see it changes every time it finds a problem. And this is a visual alert that lets you know immediately there and then there is a problem with this customer. Another visual alert 
that again, just another idea if you don't want it on a business partner. For example, if I'm doing a sales order to Noam Thompson, clicking the tab, everything is great. I can continue to move on and add the sales order. Once I'm going to change that business partner to Power Meta Technology, click the tab, I'm going to see a stop sign. That stop sign can be any text that you wish. I just wrote stop just to make it easy. I can put this text here and it can be this customer hasn't paid its debts for 30 days, whatever. You, you can think of a scenario. In this scenario, the um, stop sign is appearing because this customer is inactive. Okay? So that's around that. Another type of uh, business process, so just on pop-ups, is let me just switch and put Noam Thompson again. A another type of alerts and pop-ups would be around the things that you're doing in the system. For example, let's say that uh, I have a kind of a, either a coupon system or a fee system, and depending on what I have in the document, I would like to add a different fee or a different gift or a different coupon. Again, use your imagination. In my case, I said that um, I'm going to have a system to count my quantity, and depending on the quantity number, I'm going to get that message. So as long as the quantity is less than 20, the customer has to pay fee. So do you want to add a fee item? I've basically, behind those buttons, those are buttons that we've added, or is the pop-up has by default. We can change from yes to no to any other question in I'll give you an idea in a second, but in this case, once I'm going to click on the yes, do you want to add a fee item? Yes, then a fee item will be added. So you can imagine any kind of system that counts the total and then maybe they uh, deserve a free gift. And maybe if the total is not 2,000 but 3,000, they get an iPad or I'm, I'm stuck with the Apple product, I guess, today. And maybe if it's above uh, 4,000, they get the free shipping and another bigger gift. Okay, you get you put the logic yourself and you make that system your own. So you don't forget that this customer a, must have a, a fee. And again, just like I had the button in here, I can have it on the add or on any kind of other a trigger that makes sense to you. And then later, of course, I can use that information and copy it to another document in this guy, that type a purchase order. So again, I get it a docu a, an open document. I haven't even clicked on the ad, and I can copy contents that it has to another document. It doesn't have to be purchase order. It can be inventory transfer, for example. Okay, so those are kind of alerts, pop-ups, processes that you built very easily, and everyone, uh, if you know, that have been to my training, I've, I've been to the UK just last week or two weeks ago, and I did a training, and I trained customers as well, and, you know, they get it. Usually, if they're technical, they get it, and they can do some of that themselves, and, of course, the, the vast majority of the customization could be done by Milner Brown. Okay, so I just want to show you two more things. One of them is the ability to set read-only items and mandatory items. So, for example, let's say that we are in the delivery. We want to make this field mandatory. So, right-click on this field, make this field mandatory, and I will get a screen. Again, in usually I can just click on Add, but I just want to put some background color to make sure that people see this is mandatory. Okay, so now I'm, I haven't even closed the, the screen and it's already there, it's already mandatory. At the same time, I can take any field and make this data read-only. So I can make some users make sure that they don't change information in relevant fields. So this is now read-only. Of course, I can specify that in an add mode this should be open and in other modes it should be closed. Okay, so Last example, and with that I'm going to move into the CRM so we have some time, is around reporting. So first of all, we can do charts in B1Up and we can do grids. And I'm going to show you just one example that, again, many customers really like because that's something that is easily done at all in SAP Business One. I'm going to run a report that shows doesn't matter. It's a simple report that shows what this customer, Noam Thompson, has purchased from us. So what 
items has appear, have appeared in his AR invoice, and I can decide here to make some columns editable so I can change the item price, I can change the quantity. Of course, it will not go and change it in the document, but only here on a visual level. And I can, after I've made my changes, choose a few items, click on select, and those items will be copied into the AR invoice, and I can just click on the add. So you can build very nice reports that are going to make sense for you and copy the information from them to whatever screen that makes sense to you. Okay, so let me see where I am. Toolbox is something that we add. Um, um, it's just uh, something that has around 40 different fun types of functionality. For example, uh, all of you have user-defined tables, like a big list of user-defined tables, and sometimes you would like to block access to uh, some of those tables. Then, okay, to block the, the access, then of course the toolbox can do it. It can do, for example, a line search. So a line search is something that we've enabled for those of you that have long orders and now somebody wants to search for, let's say, HP. So I'm going to click on search. It's going to find the first HP. Second. Okay? Until it goes back to the beginning. So those are small functionalities that we've added uh, and that can be added into your customization. So we have around business partner and different areas of the application. The ability to add flex, for example, is part of those. Administrative tools, and, and that's really the end of the B1 app, is uh, all around, if you know the DTW, um, I would imagine some of you do, or the Copy Express, then the administrative, administrative tools allow you to mess update different things in the application. For example, let's say one of your sales employees left, and you want to replace all his data with a new sales employee that arrived. So you can do that with a very easy um, act with a very easy window, for example, that's just one of the examples that we have around the administrative tools. Replace sales employees, so let's say uh, Sophie is on vacation or took a, a long uh, vacation and now want to replace all her open documents and move it to Bill. So click on Execute and that will happen. Another option is to update, for example, any a business partner, I can find all the business partner and change their credit limit to 50,000. That would do that in a batch. I can of course check and uncheck what I, which I would like to update and a click on execute and that will go and update it for all the customers. So that is the B1 app. Again, any questions that you may have, just write them in the chat. I'm going to refer to them towards the end of my presentation. And now I would like to move into the CRM for Outlook, which is one of our newest products. And it really allows you to see all the relevant information that you need inside your Outlook. Because like many of us, besides you know different countries that have different priorities, but many of the countries use Outlook for their emailing system. And uh, I spend, I can tell you personally, I spend half of my time in emails. And if I can have the information that I need relevant for that email right there and then, and I don't have to look for the, inf for the information in my remote SAP Business One, which is what we have at Boyum, then it saves me a lot of time because for me to connect remotely to SAP, sometimes it takes me uh, longer and uh, I prefer to have the information right there at my fingertips than having to look for it. I'm going to show you exactly what it is. So let's move into a Citrix system because I obviously I will not show you my live system with the live data. But once you install CRM for Outlook, and it's a very simple installation, you install the server, you install the client, then you don't have to do any synchronization, you don't have to click on any periodical synchronization, it's just there for you. And what do I mean there for you? You're going to open your Outlook, you're going to see an additional two tabs, and once you highlight an email, like Stefan here, then I'm going to get the relevant information. And how do I know which relevant information it is? Because the system searches for Stefan's email in our system, in SAP Business One, and it displays and it identifies him as a contact person of Norm Thompson. Obviously, if Stefan is part of two business partners, I will get here a match button that will ask me which 
business partner I would like to see. Okay, now once I move and I would uh, move to let's say Dan, then Dan belongs to Earthshaker and I will see the relevant information that for Earthshaker. Okay, so just like that you can move between the different information and when I say I saved myself a lot of time on having the information here, I'm going to show you what I mean because right here and then when I click on Stefan, I can see who is the business partner, what is their address and if I need to drive there, what would be the direction. So you click on control click to get direction. Do I need to call maybe? So I can just click here and I can dial from within my Outlook to Stefan. Okay, so that's his phone number. I can see his industry, I can see his account balance, I can see his performance. How is he doing? When Stefan writes me an email or calls me on the phone, I can write here and, and there say that the sales have been great because the, the sales this month have gone up by 810% and year to date compared to last year that we are up 18%. So maybe I would like to give him an incentive to sell a bit more. Maybe he deserves a small uh, a token of appreciation or whatever it is, a loyalty program. And I can see some other statistics. How many opportunities I won, uh, how many quotations do I have, and how many of them converted. So Norm Dobson is doing pretty good with us. Okay, If he wasn't doing good, then we can direct the conversation and say, What's going on? Do you have a competition? Do we have a competition in the market? Is there a problem in our service? Is there a problem in our products? So that would give you a very good insight for your email or conversation with the customer. As well, I can see what products has he purchased from us. Okay, here it is. So I can see that mostly it's buying the B1 up, but maybe you know I need to sell more support hours, or maybe I want to bundle the B1 up with the print and delivery to sell more print and delivery. Again, those kinds of insights give you a, a good decision-making uh, charts uh, to continue your conversation. In addition, like many of you, as I said before, you're running and you're having user-defined fields. Of course, you can display them in here and you can say which user-defined fields are relevant for you. At the same uh, way, I can see Stefan's information. I can link him to a MailChimp distribution list, okay, so I can link him from here, and again I can see his user-defined fields. On the right side of the screen we see all the open documents that Stefan has or Norm has. For example, all his open sales quotation, sorry, opportunities and quotations with a total amount and all the open service calls so we can track and see where the problem is and all the open activities that nobody remembers to close. It's the case for all the customers. And um, again, if I need to see, let's say Stefan is saying, well, I, I have a problem with one of the orders that I had, so I can just click on that and say, okay, that's an order from today. Let's click on that and open that and I, I can open that in SAP, in, in, sorry, the Outlook. So I don't really even have to go into SAP Business One. And I can uh, here and there see what items did he buy and the logistic information, some user-defined fields information if I have, and whether this document has been tracked, I'm not going to talk about it later. So if that is not enough, then I can always choose to open that in SAP Business One and once I click on open in Business One then it will open in SAP Business One for me to review in greater details. Okay, so that's the sales order. So let's just close that. Now let's say Stefan is saying, you know, I have uh, a problem with one of my products so you can decide here to go and create a new activity or a service call or a sales opportunity. So let's say he has a problem with a product so I can click on new service call and say problem with and I can uh, see all the solutions that we have, use a defined field if we have. I can even from here create an activity Okay, and I can uh, click here on uh, New Activity. And I can fill in, let's say, service or technician. Techni 
you will excuse my English, technician, uh, call, whatever. I hope that's how you write technician. I have a feeling that it's not. Uh, but let's say that technician needs to call him and he needs to call him uh, within that, that time frame. I can link it to any previous activity that he has open. I can set a reminder if I want. Okay, and I can create it as a meeting in, in Outlook and also as a meeting that is a meeting invite. So I can right here assign it to a specific user if I need and just click on OK and go ahead and edit activity as part of the service call. Okay, so you can see the activity was added successfully. It was added into my calendar. Okay, so now I have it in here and I can invite um, I can invite the technician himself and now I get this information here and I can only need to add that service call. So once you see that note, it's basically, it's not only here, but once I click on open in business one, it will be in SAP Business One. So everything that you do inside the CRM for Outlook automatically gets synced into SAP Business One because you might have users that work with Business One and need to see that something has happened. And they don't want to have a, a, to push any sync a button all the time. They just want to have the information. And this is what this product allows them, is to always make sure that SAP is up to date with whatever you're doing in the CRM. Okay, now you're also able to see what has happened with this customer over time. Let's say my colleague Massa spoke to him and it's all the same user because it's the same login to SAP. But let's say my colleague Mess has spoke to Norm Thompson, I will see it in here. And I can even open and say, okay, what happened 14 days ago? What was the, oh, it was a first meeting for an opportunity and so on. So I can always stay up to date with whatever it is that I need to do. Now, right now, this email he complained, let's say he complained about a problem and the service call is right here. I can control click on the service call to track it and what it means is that now I'm tracking that specific email against that specific service call to make sure that I don't forget it, that I can uh, uh, take care of it later. So if we, for example, take a look at sales opportunity number 81, okay, so you see I get different emails, okay, so let's do like that. Let's try, let's see all the tracked sales opportunities and I can see that I have different communication happening around um, 81. And if you want to get a, a single view, then you do like that and then you get all the email communication for 81 and you can always stay up to date with whatever is happening. Once that is done, you can always untrack it and take it off the list. Okay, now that's what happens when the system recognizes the email, but there are many cases when I'm going to go and get an email from someone that I don't, <clears throat> I don't recognize, okay? So the system is going to say, is this a B1 connection or is it not? If this is a B1 connection, it means that this is a contact person of one of our business partners. So I can search for the business partner, click in here, fill in the details, click OK, and now Eva is part of Microchips. Uh, contacts. But maybe Eva in this case is a new lead, so I want to add her as a business partner. So I can go into find, add a business partner, choose my database, and just fill in the information and Eva will be added just like I did with the other documents. The information is already going to be in business one and I'm able from here, once she's a business partner, to add a sales opportunity for her or to update the sales opportunity. Okay, but Maybe, and that's another scenario, someone calls you on the phone and says, listen, um, what's going on with, uh, why is my account balance so high? So, for example, microchip, then you can see for microchip, you can see uh, some of these contacts, open items, trackings, okay? You can add things from here, you can see the address, you can go to the business partner, and you can click on OK to see the relevant information for microchips while you're on the phone with him or whatever the scenario may be and again see his details and everything relevant. So you don't have to only get an email, you can also search to find and 
change the view to whatever it is that you need to see. So that's the customer-centric tab. Just a few more minutes on the My Data tab because it was very highly requested that we as users want to track our own performance, especially for working in sales and purchasing and service. So we, for example, myself as a sales employee, I'm able to see all my quotations, so it's very easy for me to understand what do I have out there that is still pending and I need to call them. Okay, what orders do I have, what invoices that are pending, and then how am I performing? I'm sorry, I think I haven't clicked on refresh in here, but how am I performing? I haven't done anything in this demo database, I guess, and um, I can see I'm doing pretty bad, right? So maybe I need to speed up my activities and make more sales. And then, of course, I can have the same type of view for the purchase if needed and for other type of roles. So from here, we can create new documents and register absence. We can view our activities and service call. And also, we can see what do we have due for today that we need to take care of and what's overdue that we haven't yet closed. So you can see all the open activities. Okay? So that is making sense into or making order into our work day. We know what we need to take care of, we know what we need to do, we just need to go through those lists, go through the emails, understand what they're looking for, give them the information quickly and just move on to the ne next task. Again, any questions on that? Um, it is translated to different languages, although I know uh, your UK audience, but just in case you're running uh, international um, locations, then we do have different languages. The same for the B1UP. Uh, B1UP is trans translated to a lot of languages. And with that, I just want to do, uh, first of all, we get a lot of testimonials on our website. Feel free to read them. I'm going to give you the website right now. And just uh, something that I want you to take with you out of this presentation because I started with productivity and I'm coming back to productivity. If we take a company with 20 users, let's say a monthly cost of an employee is that amount and let's say a cost of an error is that error, is that amount and again change it for your own uh, your own business and if we be one up a user can win 20 minutes a day by easy clicks, by uh, validations, by relevant pop-ups, by coloring by not having to pick up the phone to call someone to get the details and avoid one error per week, then this is the ex expected gain you can expect to have. And again, I would leave you with that because I think that's a question of an investment rather than an expense. And uh, we are here for all the questions. You can download our product for 20 days free trial. You can follow us on YouTube. We have more than 300 videos on every small feature of the product. Uh, we have our own website, uh, of course, with a learning section. And generally, that's it for today. So I would like to thank you very much, and now I want to open the line for questions. Matt? Hi, yes, hi there. Um, thanks for that, Nama. Um, I know some of you have been posting some questions, so I'm going to try and get through those. Um, just want to say before, um, I know some of you um, have might have found the pace um, quite quick, but um, you know, as you can see, we, we haven't we we've barely scratched the surface. So um, you know, we 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 just wanted to give you a flavour of kind of the things that you can expect and the most important features. But as you can see, there is so much more available on B One Up. So um, you know, if you do uh, need any further um, assistance, you know. Please have a look at the websites, etc. Come back to us; we can send you documentation. So, um, and if you do want the recording, I'll send it to you. So, apologies, um, you know, if it went fast. But like I say, there's quite a few things that we needed to pack into a um, small time frame. So, um, thanks for thanks for bearing with us. Um, just going to go to the questions. I uh, I have a few um, questions on the um, on the panel here. Um, the first one is um, by by Pat um, asking. Can the columns in a screen be changed? Um, in other words, the stock master where we want to show only netable uh, warehouses. So, yeah, continue. 
Yeah, so, and, and, and that's a question. I think it's just um, in, in terms of the um, stock master where he wants to modify some screens, which I believe is possible, isn't it? Yeah, you can modify screen. I mean, tables you can modify with the regular SAP Business One form setting. Okay. Okay, great. Um, another question, um, I think here, um, does it all work with, um, with HANA? Um, I believe the yes. answer there is... There is yes, ab absolutely. Everything here um, you see um, is, is, um, works fully with um, SAP HANA. Um, and here's a question about um, setting up on EDI and whether Boyum and, and ourselves can assist. Um, um, Norma, from your point of view, is, is there any documentation around that, or what, what would you say? Yeah, yeah, there is uh, pretty. Uh, uh, I mean, we have a video on the EDI, so on the import experts, and uh, as I mentioned, the import will be a coding uh, exercise, so on that, obviously, we can provide the, the documentation, but at the end, the code is written by uh, your side. Okay, great. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I see... Um, Okay, let's go to another question from Miguel. Um, all macros in, in made by B1 are available for all users. All users need a license of B1? Yeah, to, in order to run a macro, you need to, to have, or in order to run B1 up, you need to have a license of, of B1. It doesn't matter which type of uh, license, but obviously you're not going to have more availability or more visibility to other screens than what SAP allows you. I hope I answered the question correctly. If it's not what you refer to, then just let me know. Yeah. So basically, um, an SAP user license requires. Okay, just great. The CRM, I would say on the CRM, if you want to have users only viewing the information on the Outlook but not actually changing anything, then indirect access license is enough for those users. Okay, cool. That's that's good. Um, so B one um, is is it ready for nine point two? Yes. Nine point two. Okay. It is. Great. All right. Excellent. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, okay. So here's a question from um, David Cox. Um, so. It's just asking about the pricing for usability and CRM. Um, what I would say there, um, David, if you can, um, after the session, if you can get in touch with your relevant account manager, um, if that's um, if, if that's in um, Ireland or in the UK, um, just drop us a line and we can get in touch with you and, and discuss the, um, the pricing offline. Um, another question, I think, um, uh, okay, I... I'm going to move just to one here um, uh, from, from Esther, I think. Um, she says, for easy access where you added order on the BP screen, I noticed that only one order got opened. Was that the latest order or how many orders opened? Um, no, it's just one blank order for that business partner. So it's not showing you, you can do a report that shows you all the open orders, uh, but in this case it was uh, the predefined option would be to open a, a, a blank sales order for that business partner. Okay. So either a purchase or a sales order. Okay, cool. That's, that's great. Thanks for that. Um, uh, let me just see if there's another question. Um, in terms of columns using forms, okay, I'm not sure if, if this is a question, um, but it's it's around changing the columns using form settings. Um, but I I think that's just um, I'm not quite sure what the what the question is there. But um, we, we'll move on to the next one. Um, actually, um, do, 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 I th I think I think those are the questions we have in the panel. Um, so, um, if there's anyone else that would like to ask something, please, um, I'll, I'll stay on the line for uh, two or three more minutes. Um, so, if you have any questions, please refer to the, uh, the question section on the right um, of, of the GoToWebinar. And if you want to type us some questions, we'll stay around for another one or two minutes. 
but uh, if, if there's not anything else, yeah, um, thanks thanks everyone for attending. I see some people are, are, are leaving the session right now. Um, like I say, if there's anything that you would like to discuss further, please get in touch with us um, and we'll discuss in, anything that you would like to know regarding pricing, etc. Uh, like I say, that discount is for 10% for orders placed before the end of March. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and that, that seems to be it. Okay, thanks Norma. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a great okay. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.